Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. Will da, Durst, da, da, da. lovely and attractive and uh, talented and uh, funny yeah. and red-haired and... Uh, <laughs> orange. Uh, uh, orange or, or, is yeah. that orange? Yeah, it's supposed to be orange. You know, it's got the orange with the little dark highlights, the orange oh, and that's black. that's very nice. Yeah. That's yeah. very nice. Now, if you don't color it, is it gray? Of course. Oh, because my wife, Marjorie, decided to go full gray. Uh, you know, a lot of my friends did you know, mm. during during this whole pandemic thing. I just decided, you know what, the heck with it. And because uh, a few tried to do things out of a box. And, oh, my, what an adventure that was. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, me and, and baseball and the San Francisco Giants. And as soon as I could get my hair redone. I rushed off and went, you know what? It's just not going to come out the gray that I want quite yet. Yeah, right. So, you know, because my mother and my grandmother had this really nice salt and pepper thing going yeah, on for yeah, a while. Well, well she's got so, gone all gray, and she's, so ha she's kind of happy with it, you know? Yeah, I'm sure I will be, too. It's a know, liberation someday. from all that coloring that you have to do, which is not a small, easy process. No, no. no. And if you pay somebody professionally, it's not cheap either. Yeah. 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 So anyway, what I thought I'd do is call you and we can get an update on Will and on his condition and the finances involved and uh, the money you still need and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And all of that kind of thing. Well, Will is in great spirits. Mm -hmm. He is uh, he's 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 thriving, you know, mentally. He's doing OK. Yeah. He's getting bored being where he is. And I can't blame him. It, it it's. Today is the seventh, I believe. Mm -hmm. So that makes nineteen months since he's been home, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. that's like a year and a half and some. So, uh, but he's hanging in there. He knows he has work to do to get here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a little frustrating time with uh, the so-called healthcare system that we have here in this country. Mm -hmm. He has timed out of his physical therapy sessions. Timed uh, out? Timed out as far... Well, the where he was going is not a permanent rehab facility. It's a temporary rehab facility. Mm -hmm. So his therapist had dragged it out and kind of like fudged on sessions. So he was able to get a lot more than he probably should have yeah. with this whole, you know, medical insurance thing. But uh, it's... His boss told him, you know what, he can't he can't come here anymore because we've done all we can here for him. And obviously they haven't because he still can't stand up on his own and he still can't walk. And that's the whole thing. Is, is it my is it, from what I've heard, what happens is the government says if by a certain time you haven't made a certain bunch of benchmarks or whatever, they quit covering it. Right. Or if they find out that you have been giving more rehab than they think the patient should have, they'll actually ask the facility for money back. Really? Yes. Yeah, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Uh, because we, we have two different facilities for his uh, different, uh, uh, your arm, your upper body is OT, occupational therapy. Mm-hmm. So we're going to one place for the OT, and we were going to another place for the PT. Physical therapy is your lower body. And, and also, the lower body is also sexual therapy, too. So. <laughs> Thank you, Marvin Gaye. <laughs> 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 yeah, at, at, at this point, you know, I would just be happy if he could stand up on his own and, uh, you know, get to the walking later. But it, his, uh, his arm is doing great with the OT, and mm -hmm. with the place that we go to there, and that is a hospital setting, and he's an outpatient type thing. Mm -hmm. So they they can fudge as long as they want, right? Uh, as, as far as insurance goes, but the other clinic is, is was uh, like a also an outpatient, but it's it's a rehab clinic. It's not a real long term right. type place. How, so how they, well how how far is he along? Is he he, uh, he seemed to say his hand has improved. His hand is very much improved. He can move his arm kind of, mm -hmm. and uh, his hand is really good. You know, you know, this sounds very frustrating because you're saying he can move his hand 
kind of. And how? And we're 19 months into this, and he can move his hand, kind of. Kind of. Well, he can move his hand and his arm. The thing of it is, is when you're in bed for as long as he was not moving, it's your shoulder muscles that go. Mm-hmm. And, and they kind of sag, and there's a displacement, and you have to get the shoulder muscles working again because that's where your arm movement comes from. Yeah. So they've been working on his shoulder, and he can move his arm, but he's not at the point yet where he could actually put his arm down and put weight on it to, to help himself okay. move. Yeah. And yeah. you kind of need that if you're going to start using a walker. You need both arms and, and that kind of a balance thing. Yeah. And they've done some standing, but he can't stand up without help because his left knee still won't straighten all the way. So he, he's got that going on. And the hamstring muscle and the calf muscle are still pretty tight. And he's had uh, shots of Botox mm -hmm. in, in those muscles to help loosen it up. A so bit. really good looking muscles now, huh? Oh, yeah. The <laughs> leg is so smooth looking. It's really, really nice. It's funny when people mention that about Botox, they, they forget to, uh, to remember that Botox was invented for an entirely different purpose than doing away with wrinkles. Right, you know. right. We know, and we know, Doctor Botox, the uh, the man who invented the Botox thing, is actually our dermatologist. Because he's, he's well, uh, his name is Mister Botox. No, like no, it's right. a Doctor Richard Glogau, and he's he's worldwide. He's known all over the place, and yeah. he's been our dermatologist for over thirty years. Yeah. And yet, maybe we see him once or twice. But it's because been, it's been used for all, it's been used for other things like this, for instance. Like this, yes. Uh, it it help uh, what they call the elasticity of your muscles, yeah. and his muscles are so tight again because the second time he was in ICU, he was there for six weeks. And there was no physical therapy or any sort of thing involved there because they were trying to save his life from the dang infection. Yeah. So uh, your muscles are just naturally not going to be working anymore. Let me let me ask you backtrack a little bit on this because you mentioned that he had an infection. Uh, a lot of things happen when you have a stroke. A lot of things happen that you don't think will happen, like what you're mentioning now, which is, uh, you know. Uh, uh, problems with, uh, uh, well, what were you talking about? The uh... <laughs> well, his his muscles. Well, you're you're in bed for yeah, such yeah, a long the time that your muscles aren't yeah. moving at all, and if you're not getting any oh, therapy, the, they're just gonna yeah the infection. You know, you don't think a... that hey, he's had a stroke. What's the infection about? But it yeah, the, happens. The, well, that was the whole thing, and they have. Uh, an infectious disease team, as they call themselves. And I was always asking them, where's your badges? What, don't you have, like, yeah. capes or coats or hats or something? Yeah. You're, you're the infectious disease team. Right. And they could not pin down exactly what the infection was. They knew it was coming from his brain. And there's all kinds of, I guess, because the, he had a drain in mm -hmm. his head. Yeah. They had to drill right. a hole in his head twice. Right. Uh, and to, to just get rid of all the fluid and relieve the pressure on his brain. And somehow or other, you know, you're always going to, you're always at risk of getting an infection. So they, he had an infection, which ended up being a brain infection. And they just had to pin it down as to exactly what they, there were always but, taking but you see, you don't, you, What I'm saying is you don't associate brain infection with stroke. You figure yeah. stroke does one thing, brain infection question yeah. mark you know i mean but but these are outgrowths of the of the stroke itself one thing leads to another it's like it like dominoes yeah. falling yeah 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 exactly and as one thing leads to another and it it took the longest time because well, oh, my sympathy in... goes with you because every time you think you're just coming along things are getting slightly better boom here comes the infection right right yeah. there's always it just seems like there's always something else yeah yeah. And and at one point he was getting maybe four different kinds of antibiotics uh, being pumped into him all day every day. He had a spinal tap. He had the, they just he, uh, he said to me that he was intubated. Uh, he was for maybe twenty four hours. Oh, okay, all right. This was um, he had been transferred to the acute rehab unit that I'm trying to get him back into now, which is another part of the story. Okay. And evidently the infection they thought 
had gone away didn't. So I went to visit him one day and he just wasn't there. He wasn't registering. He wasn't, he was kind of babbling incoherently and I knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. So I, I got the doctors to come in and say, look, you, you need to take him down and, and get you know, a, a CT. You need a, another brain scan right now. Yeah. And they said, you know what? The infection's still there. <clears throat> so he had to leave that hospital in the <sighs> rehab unit <clears throat> and go back to the other hospital, back to ICU, and hence another six weeks of them trying to figure out what the heck the infection was, where it was, how to treat it and try to keep him alive at the same time. So that night when he was, uh, before the transfer, they did intubate him so he wouldn't have to breathe on his own and, you know, the machine could I do see, it okay. for him. Okay. And, and then that was a whole other thing because when you transfer a patient who's intubated, that, there's a whole bunch of equipment that has to go with him. Yeah. So you can't just have a regular ambulance. You need an ambulance that's going to have a doctor slash nurse who knows how to run everything sit in the back with you. And, and that was hey. another nightmare whatsoever because they could call for an ambulance, but you needed special ambulance. And that was another hour and a half. A little side trip here. Okay. How much do you think this has cost so far? Oh, um... 19 months, by the way, after a stroke. Okay. 19 months after a stroke. I can tell you... Uh, from getting all of the, uh, you, you know, you get notices from the insurance companies and everything and saying, this is what it costs, this is what you have to pay. And thank God that, uh, you know, we have supplemental insurance mm -hmm. because those six weeks in ICU alone were over $2 million. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It just insane. Just, just crazy insane. So up to, and, 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 does Medicare pay for the the uh, nursing home that he's in, or no. don't they pay for a nursing home? No, he is in assisted living, which is kind of like a uh, oh, what do they call it? Uh, it's not a home health thing. It's um, it's an assisted living facility where he yeah. is. Yeah. But it's it's not covered by you. You're you're on your own for rent. Whatever it costs, mm. you're on your own. Oh boy. Well, you, so, you you have raised some money from from your GoFundMe, yes. which, by the way, if anybody wants to give, they can go to GoFundMe, put in Will Durst, and you'll get all the information there. It'll it'll come up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just did an update with all of this information just this past week. Yeah, but I mean, so, and that's why I called you to do another one of these because there is an update. I mean, things are are coming along very slowly. Uh, you know, <laughs> very slow, very slow. Certainly not as fast as you would like to see them go, and certainly not as fast. I mean, Will would like to be out of that bed right now and home and do. He always, every time I talk to him, he goes, "Well, I, I expect to be home by," and he has a, a date that he's figured out. You know, right? He's and, never and, made and any. Of them we, yet. <laughs> yeah. Every time we come up with a date, it just seems like it gets pushed back further. Yeah, because, uh, you know, in, in a way, it was a, a blessing for him to have a stroke and then <coughs> having a pandemic mm -hmm. uh, simply because he wouldn't be working. You know, well, it was a good no time. I told him it's, it was a good time to have a stroke. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. I have allergies. I do, too. It's, it's horrible here. That's why I've been doing this with my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got the throat thing going on. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just it's been difficult. It's yeah. Been difficult. Well, I mean, what 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 I when when you mention what the first <laughs> first uh, first couple of weeks or couple of months after the stroke, uh, two million dollars, uh, you have raised on GoFundMe a really decent amount of about one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. Yeah. But it's hey, wonderful. But put that against what it's costing to keep them in the medical facility. Now, you know, does Medicare take care of that at all? No. Uh, no. I've been paying rent for his room for the past, well, it's been over 12 months now because he's been there since March of 2020. Let me. This, so this you look at the, yeah. oh, okay. Now, you look at the amount yeah. that we have raised on the GoFundMe, yeah. and then you factor in that half of that money is gone already. Yeah. Yeah. Just by paying rent in his room and his medical costs, because there's a copay 
for all the medications. Let me ask that. you this. Uh, and I, don't, I, I don't want to ask you this. Depress- I'm not trying to ask you this as a depressing question, but as a question of our whole medical system. Let's say you ran out of money. That 165000 is gone and your personal finances are gone. What happens to Will? Do they throw him out in the street? Uh, basically, probably. I mean, you can't, I, I, I'm not quite sure what sort of financial things that this place has, in, you know, if people can't pay because people are there and they're paying. Uh, if, if he's out, then I would have to bring him home and I would have to be with him 24 hours a day, 24-7, because we wouldn't be able to afford to have someone come in. Mm-hmm. And that's why he's in assisted living, because if he was home, the agencies and the people that you bring in would cost more than the rent where he is right now. And during the pandemic and everything, I, would you trust someone to come into the house? Isn't it just purely sad that in this nation, which is one of the, the richest nations in the world, that we don't take care of our people when they get sick. When you get sick like this, it shouldn't be a question of anything other than you getting better. You know, there should be no bills. I mean, I imagine a good, uh, uh, could you tell me, what percentage of your life is taken with overseeing these bills and seeing what to pay and what not to pay and then calling the insurance companies and fighting with the insurance companies? That's at least 90%. Of your time. Of my time, I mean, yeah. All your free time, everything, 90% of that is spent 90%, negotiating yeah. the... Uh, the uh, negotiating all of this stuff and trying to just figure it all out and, and how to pay everything. And there were, and like, like you, you know, we lost our supplemental health care with the, the SAG-AFTRA yeah. at the beginning of the year. Right. And there was a big scramble to find another insurance company Mm-hmm. to cover the supplemental and and how do you do that it's like well seniors you know some people are like well you've got pre-existing conditions but well he had a stroke <laughs> you know how yeah. how are you supposed to and we're, not be- cover and, and we're being thrown out of our other insurance yes after he yeah. had the stroke you know right. it's not like they're going to say well as long as he's still getting working on it we'll keep the insurance going you know no they yeah. just threw everybody out I yeah. mean, I like to bring up the idea of Lloyd, uh, I forget what his name is, Norman Lloyd, who's the oldest actor in SAG. Uh, oh, he's, wow. I think, 100, maybe he's going on 106 years old. Wow. He doesn't have insurance anymore. Jeez. Because of the thing that AFTRA did, with, with uh, SAG AFTRA did, with taking it out. And I when I looked, and I've been a member of SAG, or AFTRA, or what then became SAG AFTRA, since 1968, you know, that's a lot of time. It's a lot of, uh, you like, know, thanks and, for and the loyalty, I, guys. Yeah, you know. thank, thank you so much. I paid those dues every six months, and I, you know, I, I stayed a member of the union even when I didn't need to because I wasn't working under union conditions. Right. Uh, but I stayed with it because I believed in the union. And right, then when, and you turned uh, down work, too, yeah, because I, it wasn't union work. Yeah, and um, um, you do that more with SAG than with AFTER, but, uh, but the point it was that, that, that uh, uh, all that loyalty, in the end, was never reciprocated. No, they don't care. Because I, when I suddenly got an insurance policy from them, an insurance, supplemental insurance, it was wonderful, about $2,000 a year for Marjorie and I, Okay, and it had twenty five hundred dollars in dental, and it had to, you know, and I mean it had its drawbacks. It was a little more of a copay than you usually pay for stuff, but because now I have an insurance where I just don't pay anything. Uh, but I mean, it it was it was wonderful. It was a godsend, and I never even uh, I never was able to get their insurance, their their SAG after insurance, because they never made enough under SAG after it. Okay. Right. Um, and so it was wonderful that all of a sudden I got this thing and I said, well, am I eligible for this? Oh, yes, you are, because you're a senior in the union. Congratulations. Thanks for being a part of the union all these years. And, and I felt at least I got something for all those years of loyalty to the union. <laughs> right. And then all of a sudden 
they pull the rug out from all, all of us. It was something like 9,800 seniors or something were affected right. by this. Yeah, I, I thought it was it was closer to 10,000 people that, you know. Oh, just... more, more like 12,000 members who right. were affected by this. Yeah. I mean, come on, what's a union for? This is what it's for. Not self-perpetuation, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but to supply medical help and retirement homes and all those things that unions should be doing for their members. Not saying, well, you know, we've just decided we can't afford the insurance anymore. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Well, whose nice, fault nice is that? You. Yeah, whose fault is that? It's not mine. I wasn't taking care of that fund. You were. Yeah. <laughs> so so in, in the case of Will... He's been affected by this as horribly as, as anybody else, you know. And on top of that, you do get that pre-existing condition deal when you suddenly lose one insurance and you want another insurance. Right, right. So how did you, you get around the pre-existing condition thing? Uh, it, it, well, you know, it a, he had a stroke, mm -hmm. so it's it, not like he asked to be sick. You know, yeah, and, and right. then there was that whole. He, well, he woke up that morning saying, I, "Gee, I wish I could have a stroke today." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I feel too well. I think <laughs> I need a stroke. <laughs> it just it took it took days and hours and hours, and of course the pandemic, so nobody was working in an office, so you had to hope that someone was working from home. And I I can't tell you how many I could hear the hold music in my sleep. Yeah, because sometimes you're you're on hold for hours. I finally got a real person. I said, you know, it was easier getting tickets for Hamilton than trying to get through yeah. to the insurance yeah. company. Yeah, yeah. And, and the people that you did get on the phone were working from home, and and the majority of them were very sweet and very nice, and they totally understood. And there was one woman that just spent at least an hour on the phone with me trying to talk me through the whole process and what I had to do. And she says, well, it says call that number, but don't call that number. You're not going to get anybody called this number. Yeah. But it took me a month or so just to get a, get that woman on the other end of the phone. Wow. And, wow. And it sh that shouldn't be. You know, I they, they had what I call the COVID excuse. Oh, I'm sorry. The reason we're so slow here is because of the COVID thing or working from home. Well, wait a minute. This is 2021. If we have the technology where I can Zoom you from the middle of Central Park, okay? Yeah. So uh, I, I don't give me that, that you can't work from home. Obviously, all the things you need are right there on your computer at home. It's the same as if you were in the office, except now you're home. Don't yeah. use COVID as an excuse for inefficiency. Yes, it's 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 become a, a lazy excuse. For, and so for you become of part of this whole thing, uh, you know, part of this whole mess. What what? So where where do we stand with Will? I mean, I I sometimes I try I try to call him and he doesn't answer, and I you know it's hard to it's hard to get a hold of him. Uh, please let him know I'm trying. <laughs> I will. <laughs> you know? I'm going to see him later today. And yeah, I was yeah. say, for crying out loud, would yeah. you please text Alex? And I back? would like to do another little interview with him so people know he's, you know, his, his brain is yeah. still there. But and I'm, he would love to talk to you as as well. It, it, is he? It, does he still have good hope, or does or uh, is that is that flagging? How's his but spirits? By all in 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 intense and and. Uh, Everything because I've been sitting through all of his uh, therapy appointments. His, both of his therapists were very encouraged because he is making progress. But because of the insurance, we had been cut down uh, from physical therapy from two appointments a week mm. to one appointment a week, and now we have nothing. And you can't really do anything in one hour, which is what is allotted for each session. And <sighs> it's which brings us to, you know, the second part that I had alluded to before. Mm -hmm. At this point, mm -hmm. I am trying to get him admitted into uh, this one hospital where he's going for his arm therapy. Yeah. They have an acute rehab right. unit where he was before the yeah. infection thing. Yeah. I'm trying to get him readmitted as a patient because they get three hours of therapy a day, a day five would, days bingo. a week. Bingo. Bingo. That would be fabulous. But here's the thing. He's an outpatient. 
He's not in a hospital. He's mm. in an assisted living facility. And it is doubly hard to get somebody admitted into this unit from outside. Well, tell Will to have another stroke. <laughs> <laughs> get him readmitted to hey, a hospital. Hey, I have a solution again. for everything. You know. Yes, but I, I called in a couple of favors, and I had people make some calls, and I actually heard back from the doctor yeah. who is in charge of the unit, and he remembers Will. Yeah. He's a fan of Will's. He said, I would love to have him back, and I would love to do the thing, but we have to do this dance again with Medicare, you know? Yep. Yeah. To, hey, listen, we're, we're running short on time here, but I want you to sure. put in a good plug for the, for the GoFundMe, and folks... If you know, if you give them before, give again. I mean, this is not a cheap deal, and we want Will to get all the help he can possibly get. Okay, so they go to GoFundMe, and then just type in Will Durst. D U R S T. Just type in Will Durst name, and it'll come up. Yeah. And and you can see the uh, the latest, which is pretty much what I've talked about today. Yeah. Because there's still so much work to be done. If he cannot get into this rehab unit. I will have to go and hunt for more outpatient therapy. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a deal. I've got to call yeah. Yellow Cab and set up a cab, a ramp taxi, because he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. And that's extra stress. And then, you know, I've got a paratransit card, so it doesn't cost us as much as a cab ride would, but it still costs money. And just uh, trying, trying to get him well, home. Just trying bless to get him you, home. and tell him I'm trying to get a hold of him, and I'd love to talk to him again so that people can see him. And uh, everybody, please help them. It's you know we want this guy, work. we want this guy in, in good enough shape that he can either sit on a stage or stand on a stage, and do what he does. Not for, for a living, he really for a living it. and for his own spirits. You know? Yeah, he misses yeah. working. He misses being in front of people. There's so much going on, and he's actually gotten to the point where he's taking notes again in a notebook. Yeah, which is which is great progress. Yeah, and he's just given so much laughter and joy to people, and it's just very humbling yeah. and heartwarming to see people give back. Okay, and well, he appreciates the love. Stick around while uh, when we're when we're through here, so I can talk to you a little bit more personally. But I'm really glad we talked to you today. And oh my, Alex, yeah, thank you so much. And we love you and Will to death. Okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Debbie Durst.